tonight. It's the next chapter in the ongoing crisis. One man who is now eligible to sue under the new CBA claims he was abused by the successor of Father Baker at Our Lady of Victory Basilica in Lackawanna. I team chief investigator Charlie Specht has the story. The year was 1951 when Dale Knickerbocker's mother finally took him to Father Baker's. Father Nelson Baker had been dead for years and the campaign to make him a saint hadn't yet begun, but the orphanage he made famous in Lackawanna would be young Dale's new home. He arrived on his eighth birthday. In fact, I've never had a birthday since then. Remember what you go through, you know, on your birthday? No, I haven't admitted a birthday in all these years. So you haven't celebrated it. It's traumatic. You know? Knickerbocker's parents had just divorced when his mother left him in the care of Father Joseph McPherson, who was superintendent of the Our Lady of Victory institutions. I took it that here's my father. Finally met my father. This is Father McPherson. Do what he says. Knickerbocker says the priest's first instructions were to undress. After he took my clothes, he had this like just pan, white porcelain with an ocean sponge in it. He tells me I gotta wash you. This is holy water. He's washing me all over my body. All the time I'm crying. And he puts me on a cot and covers me up. And whenever I woke up again, he's in the cot with me. And that was the start of it. McPherson was a high-ranking priest. Books about Father Baker and OLV Basilica show McPherson was one of Father Baker's successors, running OLV operations from 1949 to 1979. Monsignor McPherson was very, very well known in the diocese during his tenure. That's why he was promoted to the position of vice president of the Homes of Charity. So he was pretty much, you know, the be-all when it came to the Homes of Charity. Mark Pasquale served as a manager at Baker Victory Services in the 1990s and 2000s. He worked on the Campus for Troubled Kids that still bears the name of McPherson, who died in 1983. Pasquale says abuse at Baker Victory was well known to leaders of the diocese for years. With places like Baker Victory Services, they had become aware decades and decades ago of situations that were occurring. But instead of dealing with those situations, it was always like putting more energy into rearranging the chairs on the, um, on the sinking ship, you know, the deck chairs, than, than it was to actually devoting time to correcting the problem. Records obtained by the 7 Eyewitness News I-Team show at least one other victim has come forward to report abuse at the orphanage and by his house father at Baker Hall. And they're given a father that you're supposed to trust, never had a father, and you end up having a, a pedophile, you know? And what do I know about sex when I'm eight years old? At least three priests who are on the diocese's official abuse list, Father Art Smith, Father Thomas McCarthy, and Father Joseph Friel, were also at one point stationed at OLV Basilica or the institutions. Then for the rest of your life you worry about Am I going to turn into that? To this day? You know, it's hard just getting close to anybody because you got that back in your mind. For Knickerbocker, the only thing worse than the abuse is the way he says the diocese has handled his claim. He's one of dozens of victims the diocese has shut out of its compensation program, citing deadlines and technicalities. And the biggest thing that gets me, they keep denying it and denying it, denying it. He says he first tried reporting the abuse in 1993. Well, what they did is they said that they, uh, they have no record of me even being there. But then in 2013, he asked again, and the institution suddenly found his paperwork. Knickerbocker called the diocese again this year and talked by phone with Auxiliary Bishop Edward Gross. And he was so rude to me, it was unbelievable. 7 Eyewitness News has obtained some of Gross's internal records, which confirm Knickerbocker called to report the abuse. 
He says, you're just uh, doing this, aren't you, to get back? I go, no, I'm not. I says, you know, I says, you people have been doing this for all this time, and I says, I wasn't strong enough. Knickerbocker says at one point, Bishop Gross yelled at him. You're just doing this uh, for uh, everybody else did it, you know, as far as suing. And that's not the truth. The truth is I lived it. In December, five months after he reported the abuse, Knickerbocker received this letter from Randy White, a lawyer who works for Terry Connors' law firm representing the diocese. Even though Knickerbocker has the paperwork from years earlier, White said he had not reported the claim prior to March 1st and is therefore ineligible. White said because the application was not postmarked by June 1st, it was, quote, also ineligible for that reason. As a matter of fairness, he wrote, the diocese must contest the eligibility of this claim. I would think that they want to contain this as much as possible because of the reputation of Father Baker's and the Basilica in Lackawanna. That's a symbol of their good deeds, but there's bad deeds there too. It's slipshod and it just comes across like we're trying to cover for ourselves and make ourselves look good. And the more that the bishop has done that, he's dug a deeper hole for him each and every time that he's tried that because it gives the sense to people that he's not honest. Now we gave Bishop Malone, Bishop Gross, Terry Connors and Randy White, the diocese attorneys, a chance to do interviews for this story. They declined our requests. For the I-Team, Charlie Speck, 7 Eyewitness News.